Hello lovely, in this video we're gonna give you model answers and vocabulary about cinema and going to the cinema. I'm Maria. And my name is Rory, and we're here to help prepare you for IELTS speaking and have a little bit of fun along the way. Rory the film critic. Are you happy to talk about films and the cinema? Everybody's happy to talk about films and cinema, surely. Let's talk about the cinema. Did you usually go to the cinema when you were a child? Oh yes, we used to go once or twice a year, um, especially in the summer when the blockbusters would come out. So first of all, what is a blockbuster? Block. What, what the <gasps> is a blockbuster? I just want to say it's a big movie. Um, oh, what is a blockbuster? It's like a, it's like a big movie. Help me out, Maria. Yeah, it's like a successful film, a hit. Um, it's huge, it's successful. So, yeah, it's a blockbuster or it's a hit. The antonym would be it's a flop. No, this film is not successful, no one is watching it, everybody hates it, so it's a flop. So it's either a hit or a flop, a blockbuster or like, meh, a flop. What kind of movies have been a flop then? Because Barbie and Oppenheimer were both blockbusters. Blockbusters or film come out. So when a new blockbuster comes out, I go to the cinema to watch it. And we go to the cinema, okay, or go to the movies, right? You see a film, you watch a film, or you can also say like see or watch a movie, right? Or you can say like, oh, I go to the movies or I go to the cinema. So come out is like, well, the film is released. Yeah, the film is released or like what's on at the cinema. So I usually go to the cinema and uh, see what's on. So what films they have on. There's also what we're not saying, which is what's on and then in brackets at the cinema. Do you often go to the cinema with your friends? Well, these days, not very often. I mean, you can uh, live stream things from the comfort of your own home for a, for a fraction of the price without having to tolerate people's phones or them making inappropriate noises. We can live stream things at home. What did you mean? To live stream something. Do you know, it's so funny you've asked me that question and I've used this phrase a lot, but I don't actually know what it means in detail. I think it means that you have an internet connection and you just pull the data from the internet. Okay, so if you say like, I live stream things, it means that something is going on live somewhere else and you watch it at home. Okay, so can I say just, I watch things online at home, like is online at home. You could, but why say that when you can say I live stream things? Do you say like watch it on Netflix or I use Netflix to watch films? I don't think we can talk about specific companies because they're not paying us money yet. So if a specific company was to pay us money in order to advertise their live streaming service, then we could talk about it in more detail, which is why we're going to have to bleep out what Maria said, the company name. Yes, Netflix, uh, do get in touch, okay? We need to bleep that too. The N word. <laughs> a fraction of the price. So it's just like little money. It's cheap. Yeah, it's, uh, well, a fraction of the price is like um, a small amount of the price that it would be to do it somewhere else. So, for example, for me to watch a movie at the cinema is something like 20 pounds. I don't know how much that would be in dollars. It's like 30 dollars or something. And in Russian rubles, it's about 4,000 rubles. So that's what it's like for me. Whereas I could sit in the comfort of my own home and watch it for next to nothing, like just the price of the electricity bill and the internet bill, which is nothing. Yeah, I pay for online streaming services next to nothing. So they are very cheap, right? Like, um, <laughs> is, are you, are they paying you? Cause they're not paying me. I can watch films online for a fraction of the price. So, or uh, pay next to nothing, or it's very cheap to watch films online. You know, using different streaming services, dear listeners. Yeah, like, uh, which streaming services do you use? Could you um, write things down? And actually, uh, now everyone, I think, has watched or is now watching Sex Education Season 4. Can I say sex on the podcast? We can't talk about sex. No, you can't say sex on the podcast. So I, ca I can't say sex on the podcast. No, you can't say sex on the podcast. <laughs> okay, what about sex education? It's the name of the freaking series. You could just pick another thing that doesn't have the S word in it. The thing people do to make babies education. This word has three letters. Uh, education. Have you watched it? Could you write it down, please? At the cinema, you 
might have to tolerate certain people or tolerate certain noises. Yeah, it's just, it's just when someone like, like yeah, 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 yeah. So we kind of we have to put up with, we have to tolerate, we have to. I don't know what else can you say? That's it. That's all. That's all we've got. Although one is one is a what a C? No, it would be a B two level word, I guess. And can you check that? Am I right? Is tolerate a B two level word? That would be awesome if I was right. B two words. Oh yeah, that's right. I am better than the Cambridge vocabulary profile. Tolerate, accept behavior or beliefs that are different from your own, and. You don't like it, you disagree, but you have to kind of tolerate this. Tolerate doing something. And here Rory said, mm, tolerate people using their phones or, for example, tolerate inappropriate noises at the cinema. What are inappropriate noises at the cinema? Oh, any noise that's not coming from the speakers. I mean, why do people have to talk or use their phones at the cinema? I will never understand this concept and I would love it if the people that do this could explain it to me. Because there's no reason you don't need to be loud at the cinema. No one wants to hear what you have to say. So why would you do this? So I prefer watching a film from the comfort of my own home. Yeah, so from the comfort of my own home. This is the expression, right? Yes. Do you still like the same kind of movie you liked as a child? Oh, what, ones with big explosions and heroes? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's a great sense of escapism and nostalgia. Uh, although... I would like to point out that I have since broadened my palette with movies like, uh, well, like my favorite movie, Contact, which is a lot calmer in tone. As a child, Rory watched films about heroes and explosions, so action films, right? And it's a great mix of nostalgia. Nostalgia is a feeling when you think about the past and you're kind of like, oh, when I was a child and you feel nostalgic. And also escapism. Escapism. Well, escapism is just a distraction from reality. Um, usually, if you think uh, reality is quite unpleasant, which, if you're a child and you are forced to go to school every day, reality can be a bit unpleasant for you. You can say that going to the cinema is a form of escapism for me, right? Or, for example, adventure movies are pure escapism. I've broadened my palette. So that just means I've expanded the range of my taste to include slow burn films like like contacts that contact that film really was quite slow palate we usually use this word about tasting so tasting food or wine for example right and rory could you give us the whole sentence about this palate thing yes so i said though i would like to point out i have broadened my palate with films like contact what genres of films do you like well, in my case, I don't think it's about the genre of the film. and It's more about the quality of the script writing and cinematography. I mean, I really like science fiction, for example, but I'm not about to sit through, I don't know, a mockbuster from a company like The Asylum um, because their script writing and special effects are awful. Um, however, if you are going to twist my arm, I'll still say something like science fiction because, well, it's my go-to. Then we talk about genres, right? So genres, kinds of films. And here Rory told us about science fiction, right? You told us about action films. And what's a mockbuster? A mockbuster is like a blockbuster. It's a very cheap form of a blockbuster. And it's released at the same time of a film that is probably going to be very popular in order to gain money from the success of that film because people will confuse the titles or they'll be really into the genre of the blockbuster and they'll think that this is just as good. There are companies that have a reputation for releasing these cheap knockoff products. A knockoff is like a copy that is that's um, that's lower quality um, and it isn't very good. So I think um, when a movie like uh, The Avengers comes out, they'll release um, these companies that make mockbusters will release another film called um, like a, like Avenging Force or something like that, and it'll have some pictures of superheroes on the front which they've made up. And that kind of thing is designed to get them money from people who don't recognize that this sort of thing is going to be cheap and the script will be awful. I can think of more examples, but I'm not going to give these people the attention they want because this is how they make money, piggybacking off of the hard work of other people. Woof, that was a lecture. Thank you, Rory. So different genres of films. 
thrillers, comedies, westerns, musicals, horror films, um, fantasy, like The Lord of the Rings, fiction, animation, drama, romantic comedies, okay, dark comedies, action films, drama. Make sure that you name like uh, two or three genres of films that you enjoy. Rory also talked about cinematography. So it's not just about the genre of a film, but it's about cinematography and script writing and the writing. So every film has a script. The script is like what is um, the words yeah, that every character says. It also describes some of the actions that they have to do and key parts of the story or the plot. So it's not about the genre, it's about the plot, the story of the film, script writing and also cinematography. And cinematography, you mean like how the film is made? Yeah, so it's um, oh, it's just the effects that are used or the technology that's used to create the impression of the story that you're enjoying. So, for example, the cinematography of Lord of the Rings is amazing, whereas I'm trying to think of like a really bad movie. I think there's a movie called Bird Flu and it's 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 just awful. It's like they've copy and pasted things from um, Microsoft Paint onto the onto the, the scenes and it looks dreadful. It's one of the worst made films of all time. You can say a cinematography is dreadful or it's horrendous. Like special effects in this film are horrendous, unpleasant, extremely bad. Like terrible, horrible, horrendous. What else could be horrendous? Uh, oh, the acting could be horrendous. <laughs> Trying to think of another film where um, the acting was horrendous. Well, that's that's quite subjective, isn't it? Although the acting in a mockbuster is always horrendous. These, uh, honestly, it's they're just the worst kinds of movie ever. And if you don't like a film, you can say like, "Oh, I had to sit through this film at the cinema. So the last time I went to the cinema, I had to sit through this horrible action film." So you just sit through it, you watch it to the end, but you don't like it. If you're going to twist my arm, is an idiom. So twist my arm, just like twist, twist my arm, like take it and like kind of break my arm. If you're going to force me. Yeah, if you are going to force me, if you're going to make me do things I don't want to do. So if you're going to twist my arm, I'd say that like this, yeah? So twist my arm. If you twist my arm, I... I'll go to the movies, for example, but I don't want to go to the movies, so, yeah. Do you think going to the cinema is a good way to spend time with friends? Well, these days, not really. Um, You would probably get more out of something like going for a walk or watching television with friends. That kind of thing has fewer issues. Um, I think the only exception would be if it was some kind of shared experience like Barbenheimer, but that doesn't happen very often. To get more out of something, or to get more out of doing something. Rather than going to the cinema, you can get more out of going for a walk. Or you can get more out of uh, watching um, TV at home, for example. So, dear listener, you can also say that I prefer going to the cinema to watch the latest movies, like uh, the newest films. And also I enjoy uh, big screens, for example. I enjoy going to the cinema with like 12 screens so I can watch uh, five films at the same time. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You can also say that I enjoy the activities that a cinema theater provides. I know like a bar or some bowling options. Bowling is like when you throw a freaking ball. Yes, some other activities. Food and beverages. I enjoy eating popcorn at the cinema. Yes. So do you? Do you enjoy it? Right? And um, something like it's uh, more of an experience for me rather than just um, watching a movie. And people who go to the movies are called movie... Movie what? Ah, movie goers. Yeah, <laughs> movie goers. Why do people go to the movies and go bowling at the same time? That's kind of weird now I think about it. Movie theaters, they want to provide this experience, like a range of activities. So a film, food, 
some more activities like bowling and some what else do we have at the movie theaters? Axe throwing? No. Nah. <laughs> yes, you can. You you can. Uh, there's axe throwing. I mean, I I have only done this once in my life, but I'm sure there was a cinema nearby. X. You throw an X. Yes. Have you never seen this? Oh, I saw this in some, but not at the cinema halls. Oh wow! I'm gonna have to take pictures next time I do it. I'd quite like to do that actually. I wonder, like, an axe throwing in Dundee. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, there's axe throwing. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna go throw an axe. Troy, are you done with X? Um, well, I'm I'm done talking about it. I'm gonna do it though. Thank you very much for watching. Please like our video, share our video right in the comments, okay? And we also have our premium episodes for you, speaking part two and three with more gorgeous grammar, more super vocabulary, and we're using fresh IELTS speaking topics. The links are in the description. Bye. Bye.